Good day and welcome to Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. I am your host for today, Jacques Kingston Compton. The Peter Management Area, or PME, was included on the World Heritage List in 2004, 20 years ago, by UNESCO. But recently, the government of St. Lucia legally made the area an Environmental Protection Area, or EPA. To talk more about the subject is Chairman of the Development Control Authority, or DCA, Mr. Ignatius Je. Mr. Je, welcome to the program. Thank you, Jack, for having me on. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to have you, too. Um, first of all, for the audience's information, what does it mean exactly to be included as a World Heritage Site? Why, why is the PTO managed? Well, tell me what it, what it, well, what it means to, to be included. To be considered an, uh, or to be inscribed as a World Heritage Site, it means that the site has outstanding universal value. And of course, you would go around the world and the United Nations and Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, is the body which has that authority to do that for the world. And many countries have had many of their sites, both man-made and natural. Um, you would find places like the Stonehenge, the Taj Mahal, a lot of um, sites and increasingly other countries have been uh, making applications. It's a, it can be a long and arduous process to get inscribed. And so in 2004, the Piton management area was inscribed as a World Heritage um, Site. That is, it has outstanding universal value. It means that it is to preserve it as such as much as possible for future generations and not just for St. Lucia but universally. And why, um, why what characteristics of that area, the Peter management area, um, make it a, a World Heritage Site? Well, of course, the, 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 the whole geographic landscape, the, the Pitons rising out of, out of the oceans, the, the sulfur springs in the backdrop, um, the characteristic of the Sufra town, um, its historical um, setting and rustic settings of the countryside. Um, that immaculate view that you have if you're coming in from the sea or by air or by land if you're driving into Sufra. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is what um, says uh, all of us, uh, all about us of St. Lucia. In fact, so much so that the flag that is behind you in, in this set is really showing, depicts and, um, what it is all about, what we aspire to, the heights we seek to achieve. Um, in if, as you know, some of us who are Sumerians would know, perhaps that's one of the things you'd find on the St. Mary's College crest. And that was before St. Lucia even had a national flag. So it, it says everything about St. Lucia. This is what sells St. Lucia when we brand anything St. Lucian. It is the pitons that, you know, we use as that landmark to um, sell ourselves to the world. Yeah, and, and for those of you in the audience who don't know, the St. Mary's College motto is Sumum Otingito Nintendo, which is a Latin phrase, which means the top Re is reached Re by striving. striving. Yeah. Uh, so now, tell me what it means now that the, now that the government of St. Lucia has declared um, the area an environmental protection area by law. Well, yes. Uh, of course, before inscription, the government of St. Lucia had given notice in the Gazette, Gazette of March 2004, that the area was going to be designated. So first you have to give notice that you will declare the area as an environmental protection area. But I think somewhere along the way, um, the actual order, uh, you know, some of those legal nitty gritties, it, it was not pursued. Mm -hmm. And so subsequently, there were other activities that were taking place within the Peter management area, and which was causing some consternation and a lot of concern to the 
World Heritage Committee. That is the body that has oversight of these areas that have been so inscribed. And so what followed was that in uh, 2007, the then administration had to make um, a case before the World Heritage Committee. I think that was in Brazil. At that time, I think uh, the Honorable Richard Frederick was then minister responsible for the environment and had to take that trek to Brazil to put up a defense for St. Lucia. And so that followed with the Haida report. So a, 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 a consultant was hired to um, commission the report um, that was, I think that report was then submitted somewhere about 2008, giving, um, setting out the parameters for the types of development that could have taken place in the area. Still, there were some other threats to the, the site. And again, later down, it was uh, Dr. Jimmy Fletcher, who was then Minister for Sustainable Development and Environment, etc., um, who also had to go to Russia to make a case to the World Heritage Committee that we were going to do something about it and to put a lot of that, um, tighten up um, the regulations, etc. But it has been a long and arduous process to get there. We have been going back and forth with the World Heritage Committee. And finally, uh, the DCA board, this current DCA board, we have pursued that matter vigorously with the offices of the Attorney General and the other relevant um, authorities and stakeholders to get us to where we are now that the minister has finally, um, of course, the legal drafting, put it together. That is the limits of acceptable, acceptable change um, that was um, produced somewhere, I think about 2014 or so. And um, that, those limits of acceptable change, again, went drilled further down into detailing the types of activities, the types of buildings, height restrictions, color schemes, et cetera, et cetera, that could have taken place within the, the Peter management area. So what this order has done is really to include a lot of the, um, the recommendations or the guidelines of the limits of acceptable change into an order which forms part of the regulation of the Physical Planning and Development Act. Mm -hmm. This is what has happened. Uh, as you mentioned, um, among the limits of acceptable change, the color scheme, you mean color scheme of, of the housing in the area? Well, yeah, if you're going to have in the, in the built environment, if, you're going to, if at certain elevations you may not be given permission or you're not permitted to put certain buildings or undertake certain activities mm -hmm. at different locations so that the, the visuals, uh, let us say, if you're watching from the sea, you should not be over the canopy of, of the trees, mm -hmm. of the tree lines. Uh, if, you, if at all there is permission, then there would be restrictions on the types of colors that are not extremely conspicuous mm -hmm. and that does not um, compromise the, the, the natural beauty of the site. Mm -hmm. Um, could you talk a little bit more in detail about your organization's role in, an, in, in the fight towards this legislation to be put forward, the DCA? Well, of course, the Development Control Authority is the, as per the Physical Planning and Development Act, uh, is the authority that gives permission for all development um, in St. Lucia, um, be it in the terrestrial or the marine environment. And so there are guidelines, and we also guided by the law. And where we, well, whilst we had those guidelines um, of the limits of acceptable change for the Peter management area, uh, it was not, as a court ruled against us, um, I think sometime last year, mm -hmm. that the, it was really a policy and it was not law. So we had to get it into the law by making it part of the regulations. Mm -hmm. And so this um, statutory instrument now gives us that legal teeth, as it were, to be able to enforce uh, a lot of what the provisions of those guidelines. Does it mean um, sort of extra work for, for the government of St. Lucia to properly or effectively manage the area? 
Well, it is, it is not more work. I think what it has really done is to put it in a legal format so that if what, what the court found against us was that we had used the guidelines um, to make the decision, although albeit we had had the, the boundaries and all of these established mm -hmm. the, by the original um, gazetted um, notice of a declaration to make it a, or for the, before the inscription, but it was not, it did not form part of the regulations of the DCA. So legally, um, we may have been in breach of some of uh, people's um, fundamental constitutional rights mm -hmm. um, in what they can do and cannot do. But if it's put into law, then you have legal legs to stand on and can make the decisions as a development control authority. As we speak, we are still in certain battles with um, certain individuals within that area um, with respect to certain developments that had come before us and our decisions on them. Well, that, that brings me to another, my next question. How does, it <coughs> how does the new uh, protection affect residents and, and businesses in the area? Well, I mean, it, it will not prevent, I mean, a lot of things that already exist. Because as you know, um, well, law is not really retroactive. It cannot be applied retroactively. But um, it does, the, the law still permits for um, certain types of activities to take place within the, the Peter management area. And so what it does is to help, better help us with enforcing uh, some of the, the guidelines or the planning regulations as it were so we would be able to better regulate that it does not necessarily mean things cannot happen in, in those areas there are some things that can happen and some things that cannot happen and those that you allow to take place within there there are guidelines on to how you go about doing it okay we're due for a break I want you to stay with me you're watching Issues and Answers. Please stay tuned. We'll be back in a moment. Hello, OECS. Yo, OECS, this is your ocean. If I am to protect your future, we have to work together. It's the time to work together. If I am to help protect your future. Once I used to be so pure and clean, and those hills were so fresh and green. See me as your dumping ground The current situations Has me choking on your pollution Think hard about it You will agree That really there is No you without me Make the zero waste pledge Be responsible Reduce your waste Recycle where possible yeah. It's down to you So make the commitment Recycle Cycle OECS, green actions, blue oceans. Welcome back to Issues and Answers. I'm your host, Jacques Kingston Compton, and we are with the chairman of the DCA, the Development Control Authority, Mr. Ignatius Je, and we are talking about the Peter Management Area and its recently added legal protection as a World Heritage Site. Uh, Mr. Je, thank you for sticking with us. Um, but I want to talk about now uh, some of the risks that you mentioned earlier, or threats to the Peter management area's status as a World Heritage Site. Could you talk about what some of those threats were? Okay, some of those threats would have included, I think one of the first threats, even before the inscription as a World Heritage Site. Um, and the challenges to get us a, as, as a World Heritage Site was um, what is now Sugar Beach, right? That's, um, it was then Jalousy, there was a development in between the Pitons, and there were concerns about, you know, how this is structured. Then there, was a, there were some other developments that took place, I think at the time the government had owned 
um, what was then the Margaret Tooth, where which was a home for senior citizens. And some of the proposals to put an hotel in that location. And the World Heritage Committee was very concerned about how that would take place. So this is where the genesis of the Haida report and the limits of acceptable change were commissioned um, to be able to say, all right, if, some, if, if you're going to put some buildings in those areas, these are the types of structures that you can put, the height restrictions, the footprint um, on, on what slopes, and at what elevations they can go, you cannot put certain things above a certain elevation. Then there were restrictions about what can happen at the Sulphur Springs, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had, I mean, way back in, in the days, even prior to us having World Heritage Inscription, there was, and again, we have had so many other uh, investors who have approached the government of St. Lucia about possibility of putting uh, zip lines and tram lines to mm -hmm. to go to the summit of the pitons and so on and you know there are some people who have approached us and I've said to them I mean this you know you, you do you know understand what the pitons mean to St. Lucia this is what is inscribed on our national flag and I referred someone to uh, a biblical context where Moses was climbing Mount Sinai and he was asked to take off his shoes. Mm. And so this is a similar thing that we are saying. This is sacred ground to us. This is St. Lucia. This is represents our hope and aspirations rising from the sea and to reach the top by striving. We cannot desecrate, desecrate this monument that was left to us by nature. We came and found this. I mean, you go to other parts of the world, you will have things that are man-made, like the Great Wall of China, um, the Statue of Liberty in the United States. So if you go in, what, how, what do you know? Um, how do you know this is New York? Okay, you know the Statue of Liberty. Mm. Paui, where you have the World Cup now. Um, sorry, the Olympic Games, the mm. Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. You have the Taj Mahal in India. What we have, we have the Piton management area with the two Pitons, the Piton Mitan, and the Sulphur Springs, the town of Soufria. This is us, and we cannot desecrate this. We do not want to have a dollar sign on our national flag. We want to have the Pitons. Mm -hmm. That's what we are fighting to protect, and we believe that people must appreciate this and this is it also part of it's a, it's a continuous process of education because you have the Peter management area advisory committee they are the ones this is the uh, local authority that I'm um, within the Department of Sustainable Development that is really supposed to do a lot of the enforcement and education we as the DCA are helping to support that by when new applications come um, for developments, we can say this is what can happen, this is what cannot happen, or we totally reject the application because it is not compatible with what we have signed off on as a, a space of outstanding universal value. Um, what what um, areas around the, the PTOS does the, the PMA encompass? How, how wide? Is the, oh, the, bound, the, area, boundary, the boundaries? Yes, right. the boundaries. Um, I'll, I'll read for you exactly the boundaries um, as it it is, um, not to um, mm. give you any mistakes about mm. it. But it, it it goes from the just just give me a second. Mm. Let me find that. Is it would include the Sulphur Springs. The yes, it includes mm. the it includes the Diamond the Falls. town of mm. Soufre. Mm -hmm. It goes west um, east that includes all of the Diamond Falls mm -hmm. and go back to the Sulphur Springs along the route um, going back to the Livorne River that mm -hmm. is where you have what is called the Myers Bridge mm -hmm. Myers, and goes down all the way to to the sea to the beach and out in the marina environment for about five um, 
kilometers out. So you're talking the area of about 25.4 kilometers of space, um, which is equivalent to um, almost about 4% of the geography of St. Lucia. So, yeah, this is, this is where it is. Well, what about the, the town makes it so special as well? Is it the architecture? Is it... Well, some po yeah. Well, it has to do with some of the to preserve some of the architecture in the, in the town, and of course you have the the other plantations, the history of the Rabo Estate, um, which is now the Hotel Chocolat. Even there, where you have developments, there are certain height restrictions and color schemes that they can and cannot use. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I want to talk about. Uh some of the parameters for the management of the area. Can you, can you talk about what those are, what those parameters okay. are? Okay, some of the parameters, for example, you will have, there they are, they are, they are about six, six zones, or four zones as per this, right? Um, you have the zone one means the Piton and Piton Mita area. Mm -hmm. That is where you have the Tet Paul and so on. Um, you have the zone two, which includes the sulfur springs and uh, then you have zone three means the coastal area um, that is alongside um, that runs parallel to the shoreline so that entire coastline is also in the protected area because as you go beneath the surface you have the corals and you know that has to be protected and the landscape under the, the marina territory um, and then you have Zone 5, which is also the, 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 the marine space. And it also protects um, the Queen's or the King's chain in that regard. That, that is also very critical and giving public access to those areas. And, and this is another thing that the government has committed to doing. Um, it's still a work in progress. There are lots of areas we still have um, in collaboration with the DCA the St. Lucia National Trust, the Archaeological Society, um, the, the Sufre Marine Management Area, and a lot of other the, the coastal communities, there are sites that we are still going to have to list and put them as environmental protected, I, protection areas so that there must always be um, unhindered access to those spaces. This is our heritage. This is our patrimony. Mm -hmm. uh, th so the added legal protection, what does it mean for, let's say, industries like the tourism industry? What, what are, or are there plans in the future with regards to management of the area? Any big plans that we can look forward to? Well, the, the plans are, uh, I mean, what it is really, a lot of these have already been happening, only that we had not taken the guidelines mm -hmm. and made them part of the Physical Planning and Development Act. So what this has done is really to uh, help us with the enforcement and for better management from a legal perspective. And before we, we come to the end of the program, is there anything else that you, you would like to add with regards to management of the of the area, of the PTO management area? Well, what I'd like to say is that we, we have to work with all the, the stakeholders, the public, mm -hmm. and, and it, as I said, it has to be a continuous education program. So we take pride in our country. We take pride in our heritage, in our patrimony, what, is, what was bequeathed to us, and what we must do the same for the generations to come. Um, you know, the issues with the proper disposal of our, our waste, solid waste, mm -hmm. and um, waste water, etc. How we manage these things, they are all interrelated. Um, how we manage our environment, sustainable use of our environment, our marine resources, how our fishers and other users of the marine spaces, mm -hmm. that we help to protect those spaces so others ourselves, others to come, our visitors can appreciate what we have to offer as a tourism destination as it is marketed. Uh, but as a people, it is about having pride 
in what is ours. And if we reflect on um, the our national pledge, which says, with God as my guide, I pledge my allegiance to my country, St. Lucia. I proclaim that I will serve it with pride and dignity to defend it with vigor and valor in the pursuit of excellence, justice, and equality for all. If we really reflect on those words, we will really truly help to protect not just the Peter management area, but everything that is St. Lucia and everything that is us. This is what I'd like to say. That's brilliant. I want to, that's a very brilliant way to end. I want to thank you, Mr. Je, for coming on to our program. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Much. Thank you for having me. You're watching Issues and Answers, a production of the Government Information Service. Please stay tuned to the National Television Network to more programming like this. Speaking of developments of government and new policies enacted, please also look at our Facebook page, Government of St. Lucia, and our YouTube channel, Government of St. Lucia. Please stay tuned to NTN for more programming.